Hi, my name is Steve Kinsley. I'm the Chief Wackadoo at Wackadoo Information Systems. Today we're talking about reports and report templates. Now reports are used in every application that we do, so this is something that applies globally. We happen to be using our Realty Office application, which is a, an application we basically discontinued for business reasons, but it does demonstrate everything that we want to show about reports, report templates, and what you can do with those report results uh, when you get them back. So. Let's dive in. As we said, every application has a reports page. And all it is is a numbered list of reports. And, and to run one, you just click on it and bang, there are your results. As with every page, you can unselect the report name there and go back to your list. Or if you want to, you can come down and click the cancel button. That, that's normal application navigation within Wackadoo applications. Now the other page that comes up is under custom templates because reports are customizable. So let's click on report templates and you will see a similar looking list but not quite the same. What you're looking at is the list of reports that are in the system and the output files that you can use to format those results. And we're going to get into that. But you'll notice there is an admin list SQL, again, a structured query language, it's a database technology term, that if you look at this, you can see this is exactly what the query is that is going into the database when you click on that name. Now, if you care about this stuff, great. If you don't care about this stuff, even better, we're going to hide that from you now. We'll come back and we'll show an example of creating your own uh, in a little bit. However, if I go back to my reports page, I don't care about what the structure of that thing is. I just need to know I'm getting my administrator list for this office of real estate agents in this, in this example. Um, now, there are some queries where you see the note says requires year, requires month. Let's, let's go look at birthday, the birthday list. And we'll see that, hey, we got all August birthdays. Well, that was because over here on the right, we have this thing called additional report parameters. Now, this is something that varies by application. And this particular application has four fields that um, different reports want to use uh, based on the business requirements at the time when we define this application. Right now, we saw when I unselect birthday list, single date by month, it said it requires the month. So I'll click on that and I see that, well, August was selected, so that's the one that was used. Uh, let's go look at May. And you'll see that it reran the query just by clicking on the drop down here. So here are my November birthdays. You get the idea for how additional report parameters work. Let me give you another example. Uh, down here, we're going to look at office versus local market performance overall. And I'm looking at, you know, how many uh, closed units, how much sales volume, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, was it the market value? Was it the office value? And you can see, are we up or are we down? That kind of thing. Um, again, that's application specific, but what's global is the ability to change the year that you're looking at because that's the parameter that this report requires. Now, you'll notice that if I change month, it does absolutely nothing because it doesn't use month in this particular query in this particular report, I should say. Okay. Now, so what we've got is a list of reports. Some of them require these additional parameters. You run the report just by clicking on it. There are 190 different people who work here and they all have birthdays. What we have not done is looked at what you can do with the output. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to go look at transactions by month because this is the one I want to use for my example. And what you see are four buttons at the bottom. And the reason I picked this particular one is because it has all of these buttons. Allow me for a moment to unselect. I'm going to go look at my coordinator list. And you'll see I have export and cancel, but I don't have the two buttons in the middle. This is why we're picking the transactions by month report, because it demonstrates all of the features. So we've got this populate template and view graph in the middle. So the things that you can do with the data on the way out for a report are shown at the bottom. 
you always have the ability to export your data. You've got three formats that you can pull your data out in. You have a text format, you have an XML format, and a spreadsheet format. Now the text format is exactly that. It's a tab delimited file. We're going to look at that. And what you get is a, a zipped file uh, put dumped into your download um, directory. This XML format is something that you're not going to use unless you're a programmer or you, you know, okay, great, you want to see what it looks like. That's um, really not use, useful for you. It's something that we use in, in troubleshooting and uh, administration and bulk data work when we're programming. But I'll grab it anyway, just so you can take a look and see what it looks like. Now the spreadsheet is exactly that. It is the spreadsheet version of this text file. And the, the content is this stuff. I mean, this is, this is what it is. So I'm going to export that. So now we've exported all three different formats. And we're going to go look at that in the folder. And I'm going to drag that spreadsheet over to my desktop. And I'm going to drag this XML file over to my desktop. I have it set for text editor open. And I'm going to drag this text file over to my desktop. And I'm going to delete those guys from my downloads file just because I don't need them. So first thing we're going to look at is the .txt file version. And there it is. Everything that comes out is going to have this resource column on the front. There's the year, the month, the month number. Well, that should look very familiar to you because those are the same columns that you're looking at here. Same exact values. Now, another format of that same data is the spreadsheet. Now, it's not a particularly pretty spreadsheet. It is just a text straight tab delimited import mechanism here. And I'm going to make sure that we can see all of those numbers and that they're formatted correctly. And you realize that it's the same stuff. It's all it is. It is a raw database result dump. And you get that and you can do whatever you want with it. And I'm not going to save that file and I'm going to close that file. Now the one that's a little screwy is this XML file. And if you know about XML, great. If you don't, don't worry about it. It looks like this. You'll never want to look at that again if you don't know what it is. Okay. Yeah, I got that short shrift kind of thing going on there. Now, the next button that we're looking at at the bottom here is the populate template um, mechanism. Now, in this case, we have a spreadsheet template. Now, I'm going to go away from this report result for a moment and go back into report templates and show you what we're talking about there. Um, let me go down to the end and we go transactions by month. This is the SQL. This is the actual template that is used. This is the database query itself. If I click on that, you realize this is a little bit more complex query than we're, we're looking at here. And so I'm going to cancel out of that because I don't want to look at that particular template. I do have two more templates. One is a spreadsheet. The other is this thing called GHTML. And this is a custom um, suffix that we, we did ourselves uh, at Wackadoo for doing graphs in HTML. So we're going to show using both of these templates. Now, this template is literally just a spreadsheet file. It has been loaded up there. I can download it. I can look at it. I can edit it. I could then reload it up top and put it back on the server to modify it. I can make that look any way I want. We're going to demonstrate. A, a, there's another format that you can do for that as well. And we're going to show you using the, um, uh, the graphics to, to put a graph up there as well. Now, there's one other kind of template that I want to point out. And I'm going to sort by template extension. And I'm going to do it, go home. It is a document template. So not only can you spit things out to a spreadsheet, but you can spit things out to a, a Word document if you're using Microsoft Word, um, Google Docs. It's the same docx format uh, supported across both. So what I'm going to do is go back to our reports. Now, notice when I go back to reports, I've already got this report selected. So it's going to automatically run that report for me. There we go. 
So the next thing that we can do is to come over and populate a template. Again, there are a couple of different kinds of templates and we'll talk about those, but this one provides a spreadsheet template, which is gonna be a little bit different than this one. This is just the raw data file. We saw that and we'll, we'll open the two and compare them in a moment. But what I wanna do is I wanna populate the template for this report, again, by name, transactions by month. I am going to hit populate template and we'll see that I got another zip file and I can drag this thing down over here to my desktop and I'm going to now compare the two different I'm going to compare the two different spreadsheets here's the spreadsheet I got when I did the export it is a raw to just a dumb straight dump of the data well it's not the first page is not that different than what you get in your template the populated template file but what you have in the one spreadsheet is just the raw data in this one you've pre-done some sort of graph or report or something that you want to look at um, some way that you want to manipulate the data that was in this data range and so you would have pre-done this uh, rather than have to come into your raw export and then create the graphs by hand. This is kind of a dumb example because graphs are very easy to generate in um, Excel and in uh, Google Sheets. So uh, you get the idea that you can have just a raw spreadsheet that you pull out or that you can have pre-populated templates that you would put in that would use the data from that first page um, uh, over the way that you want. Okay, so the last thing that you can do with this, and this is something that's uh, it's just within the web page, um, sometimes we will create a graph specifically for displaying on the web page, and that would be the view graph button. You're probably not going to see that in your applications. It was something that we, we built specifically for this, um, but Possibly we're thinking about integrating graphs and such into a couple of other applications where it makes sense. So that is sort of a report and what you can do with the report once you've got that, that data going. Now, let's take a look at the report templates themselves. Now, as you can see, we have, we're looking at our transactions by month again. We have the actual database query, the SQL. We have that spreadsheet that had the pre-done graphs in it. And we had this GHTML thing. Well, this is, this is just something that we have um, defined for our website to be able to do graphs on the page. And so I'm going to close out of that template and come back to our list here. Now... <clears throat> There is another format, and we're going to actually demonstrate that now. Let's pretend that you want to create your own report template. Now, before we do that, notice that all of these are considered system templates. Every one of these says true for system template because these are the default ones that you get when you click the button, reload all default templates. We provide all of these reports in these report templates out of the box um, as a starting point for you. But what I want to do is I want to create a new one. I don't want to do transactions by month. I want to do transactions by agent. Now, uh, just to clean up the, pa the, the page, what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete those files that we just downloaded. So you can see we've got these two files here that I'm going to use. Let's create a new report template. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this transactions by agent. And I'm actually create, I have a choice for which kind of template I want to do. I'm going to start with the SQL query, with the SQL query. And I happen to have that already defined in this file, so I can just cut and paste. Now, I could cut and paste. I could drop it in there. I could drag and drop the file if I wanted to. Um, I didn't want to. I just wanted to do that and show you that, yeah, we're, you can actually type in here if you want to. Now, if you know SQL, this is uh, we're using MySQL, uh, in case you're wondering which database. 
um, very straightforward uh, structured query language query. There it is. Boom, done. Guess what's going to happen when I go back to my reports page? I have transactions by agent right here. I just created that one and there was no file name because I didn't upload a file. This is not a system template. This is one that we created. Let's take a look and see what comes out when we do. Whoops, sorry, wrong page. I want to scroll down and I'm going to go run transactions by agent right here. Requires a year. Well, I'll get into why that requires a year and how that happened automatically for us in a moment. It runs the database query that we just defined, and it's going to pull them out. It looks like it's sorting by associate ID, which I know it is because that's how we defined it. If I want to change which year I'm looking at, it will do that. And you'll see, okay, there were 621 transactions for across all of the agents in this office. Again, this is all randomly generated data. There are no real names. There are no real addresses. These are random street names, random first names, random last names, random number generation. Okay, so I now have a database query that I've defined. I'm going to go back into my reports template page. And because I still have that report template defined or selected, I go right into it and look at it. Yes, we sorted by associate ID. And we see that we've got a date format in a particular way that we wanted. We've got a transaction type. We've got a count, a value, or whatever these things are. So now the question is, why did it require a year? Well, this is a wackadoo thing. This is something that we built into these report templates. The ability to say, I have a variable that needs to be filled in, in this case, year. If I go back to my reports list, sorry, I have to unselect that and I scroll back down, it automatically looked at that query and said, hey, year has to be selected. That's one of these additional parameters over here. And so these are the four additional parameters that I could put into my queries in this particular application. Again, that varies by application. But that's how that happened. I mean, we just put that into the, the template and it gets filled in and the system knows to go look for that thing. Okay, now we're going to go back into our report templates. And I don't want to see just that raw output for transactions by agent. I want to create a new Word doc, transactions by agent. Now, I have to get the same name, transactions by agent. And I am going to select Word doc. And it switches over and says, OK, I want to upload a file. Well, watch what happens. I now have this Word document. Before I drag and drop it over there, let's take a look at that Word document. It's a very simple file where I'm doing basically the same thing that I do in my mail merge. If you've looked at the email templates video, this is the same thing. What I've got are the field names from my report in squiggly brackets and I can use them any way that I want and I have a resource block fake HTML tag that tells me that I want to build a table of things there's a whole conversation about resource block in that application or sorry in that video uh, in the email templates video um, it applies here we'll talk about that in just a moment but basically what it's going to do is for every person on the list, every associate, it's going to list all of their transactions here and it's going to take this page and it's going to concatenate it onto the bottom of the file. And you'll have one big long document that's got all the different pages that you need to give to each of the people. You'll see that in just a second. So I'm going to drag this template over here. I'm going to use the drag and drop this time and you'll see it detects the file size, the name, the, the format, things like that. And I'm going to hit save. So now if I unselect this one, I see on my list transactions by agent, SQL, transactions by agent with some file information as well. Neither of these are system templates. So these are custom ones that we did ourselves. Now watch what happens when I go back to my reports page and I scroll down and I run transactions by agent. 
I see the populate template button again because it has a docx template. And we've already talked about export and it's exactly the same thing here, uh, text, XML and XLS. Now I'm going to come out here and I'm going to run this particular template. Now this takes a little bit, um, not terribly long, but we have to go through. You just did a mail merge of all of these different agents against that one template. And we're now going to have however many unique agents we have here represented in our Word document. So um, just a note on these file names. You see the name of the report. You see the date and time, exact time when you did it. Um, uh, Greenwich Mean Time. Sorry, that's what the plus four zeros is. Um, and it's, it tells you the extension of what's inside it and then dot zip. So um, same exact file name here, but without the dot zip on the end. So I'm going to pull this Word document over here. I'm going to close this down because I don't need that anymore. And now let's open up the Word document that came out of that mail merge operation. And you see... Catherine Chan had one. Ethan Chang had, it looks like, four or five. Let's go back and look. Chang, Ethan Chang, one, two, three, four, five. There they are. Now, the formatting on this one, uh, we don't have as much control to be able to put this in tables ahead of time. But because you've got this in a Word format, you have the ability to go in and uh, clean up formatting any way that you need to or... Maybe you change your queries, maybe you change the, the layout. But you can see very easily how you can generate um, bulk mail or bulk memo generation or uh, you know mailing list kind of things that you want to do out of your application using a docx um, template. Now, I want to go talk about that resource block tag for a minute because that was something that is a specific wackadoo custom. Uh, actually, I don't need to show it to you here. I can show it to you in the original file that I, I did. So this resource block tag is something that we do. It's not, it, we did it originally on the email templates and that's why it looks like an HTML tag, but we use the exact same mechanism for doing the docx format so that you can insert this kind of mail merge and build a table mechanism. Now, the resource block only applies to a single field per application. So in this application, the associate ID is the only field that you can do resource blocks on because that was the business case. Um, there are two other applications that use this, th sorry, three other applications that use this. One of them is donor care, in which case that field is the member ID field. There's another application called sponsor care, in which case the field that you can do these resource blocks on is called sponsor ID. There's another application called teacher gifts, and that one uses teacher ID. Now, teacher gifts is meant to send bulk email to teachers, and so they, we do this kind of resource block thing into an email, but you could also create a report that does this, and you could have hard copy of that same thing. In sponsor care, uh, the idea is to send out notes and documents to uh, people who are sponsoring orphans uh, in, in an orphanage in Africa. And so then you would be able to let people know, here are all of the donations that you did, or and here's the update from the child that you're supporting, or the children, plural, that you're supporting. Um, in donor care, the member ID field is actually the under the hood name for the donor person in that system. And you would keep track of what their donations are, whether they have... Um, uh, whether they've been acknowledged, whether they've been thanked, whether, I mean, there's all kinds of things that you can do in that. Um, but again, you can group their donations by that member ID. In this application, it's associate ID. But that's the power of that resource block is it's your mail merge and it does your automatic tabulation for you. So, done with resource block. What we have done is we have created custom reports. 
We have looked at some database query language stuff that if you care about is very easy. If you don't care about, don't worry about it uh, because it's just a name on the report list. We have talked about being able to run queries, being able to apply additional report parameters. We have talked about the different things that you can do with the output of your report. And I'm going to go run that so that we can see that again. Down here across the bottom, we've got your standard export, three different formats. We've got templates, which can be um, either spreadsheet or document or both. If I had, uh, if I had a transactions by month uh, Word document template, then I would see both of those choices here. I've got the ability to graph things uh, as well. Um, I've got the ability to apply additional report parameters. I think I just said that a moment ago. Uh, so that's just about everything that you need to know about reports and report templates. Now there are a couple of things here. Um, first of all, if you know about database technology and you're thinking to yourself, oh my gosh, they gave access to the raw SQL. We protect against anything except for queries going in, so you can't do anything that's going to damage the database or mess up the data. You can't modify anything. You can't do anything like that. All you can do are queries. Um, so that's, that's the first caveat for those of you who are technically inclined and care about those things. I could just hear database administrators going, oh my gosh, you gave end users the ability to create queries. No, we did not do that. We protect against that at a couple of different layers. Now, if you have any questions about reports or report templates, please feel free to give us a call. If you need a custom report written, give us a call, especially if you're in a ministry or a charitable uh, situation where you might not have access to somebody who understands the database technology. That's why we do wackadoo.org so that we can be here to support you in that kind of thing as you use this application to serve the people that you minister to. If you have any questions or comments about anything about reports or report templates, please feel free to reach out to us as shown on the About Us page at wackadoo.info, wackadoo.org. Thank you so much for watching this video.